We are going to use Levier's fixed point theorem we introduced in the video on Cantor's theorem to formalize Russell's paradox. To make this paradox precise, we need first to clarify what is meant by a naive set theory. In a naive set theory, we have global element hood relations on sets, and by global we mean for every pair of sets, x and y, we can decide whether x is an element of y. Also in a naive set theory, we assume that all predicates are collectivizing. This means that if we pose some well-formed question about sets in set theoretic language, there should be a set which contains all of those sets which satisfies that question. We can give arrow theoretic content for each of these requirements. The global element hood relation becomes a morphism in some ambient category of which we are assuming to model naive set theory from the product s by s to 2, where s is the object of naive sets and 2 is the object of truth values. The condition that all predicates are collectivizing becomes a one-to-one -one correspondence between predicates, which are interpreted as morphisms from s to 2, and its extension, which can be interpreted as a point in s. Let's briefly recall Russell's paradox. It states that in a naive set theory, not all predicates can be collectivizing. In the proof, we assume all predicates are collectivizing. Then Russell constructed the set R of all sets which don't contain themselves. Then we have R is an element of R if and only if R is not an element of R, giving us a contradiction. We can now give R in arrow theoretic terms by mappifying it. The characteristic map or predicate corresponding to R is the following composition, where delta sub s is the diagonal map, epsilon is the element hood relation, and the last map is the logical negation map. And we can compare this to construction given in Cantor's diagonal argument. Since we don't need the full structure of exponentials for this argument, we give another definition which is weaker than point surjectivity. We say a morphism phi from x by x to y is weakly point surjective provided for each morphism f from x to y, there exists a point little x in x, such that for each point little a in x, phi evaluated on x a is equal to f of a. In other words, the following diagram commutes. Then we have the weak levier cantor theorem. Let E be a category with finite products. If there exists a weakly point surjective morphism phi from x by x to y, then y has a fixed point property. For the proof, let tau be an E endomorphism of y. We want to show that tau has a fixed point. So we let f equal the composition tau phi delta sub x. And then since phi is weakly point surjective, there exists a little x in x such that for all little a in x, f of a is equal to phi evaluated on x a. Then in the following diagram, we have this blue diagonal morphism making the upper triangle commute. And this makes the yellow composition equal to f. Therefore, we see that tau of f of x is equal to f of x. Thus, y has a fixed point property, completing the proof. Then as a corollary, we have Russell's paradox. You cannot have a naive set theory with a truth object with negation, meaning that the theory is consistent. There exists two points, true and false. And a global element hood relation in which all predicates are collectivizing. And the proof is just the application of the contrapositive of the theorem above.